What's up? What's up? What's up, people? People, how we feeling? How we feeling out there, folks? Hottest show in the streets on a Wednesday. Coming to you from the home location in Tuscaloosa. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of TDA. What's popping, everybody? Happy to be here with you talking nonstop Alabama football. You know what time it is. You hop in the comment section. You hop in the, la- the live chat tonight. You get your thoughts in, your comments in, your questions in. Go go crazy, go wild. Get rowdy over there in that chat. And I will take it off your questions, off your comments here on the show. As always, hit that subscribe button. Get locked on to all things Bama. Hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button as well. Show us up that support right there with that thumbs up. Hit the notification bell so that way you miss nothing when it comes down to your Bama football news, daily super chat go $100, daily super chat go 100 bucks right there. Thanks to all of you guys checking us out on the show. On yesterday, I got a chance to speak to the offensive assistant coaches and offensive players here for Alabama following practice. Got a chance to glean some things from offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan. Wide receivers coach Jamarcus Shepard. Both of those two were tremendous interviews. Got a chance to also talk with wide receiver Kobe Prentice. That was awesome as well. So I'm going to get all of those things. Uh, Bama suffering an injury in spring ball. I know we hate that. We can't stand that, especially in a position where we were really excited about to prayers to Jalen Hale that he's able to recover get back on the field, hopefully nothing season-ending there. You talk about a very talented young man of whom uh, did some good things as a freshman and was competing, was right there with an opportunity to start at that X position at wide receiver. So uh, our thoughts, prayers out to Jalen Hale, a strong recovery for him in the end. You got a couple of freshmen rising uh, offensively that people need to take seriously. We get to all of this conversation right here on the show. But we begin all things by going through a couple of your comments right now to start the show here. So we begin with my man, Jimmy Cash Money Bucket Clay with the road tide. Appreciate Jimmy helping us out here on the show. Jimmy also writes in Steven at exclamation points. I'm right here, Jimmy. Right here, my man. Right here, giving you your Alabama football news here on a Wednesday. We got Road Tide, no rise up right near with Road Tide. Jimmy, he shot out Jimmy Clay there. J Dog 67, the RTR. Appreciate you, J Dog, helping us out here, hanging out with us. James Crick with the RTR as well. Thank you, James. We got Doug Treadway with the Road Tide. Happy Easter. Thank you. Duh, we are in that resurrection season that's upon us right now. This is Holy Week here. Get Box with the three elephant emojis right there. Appreciate that from Get Box. Aaron McGuire with the Road Tide. Appreciate you, Aaron. You helping us out on the show. Daryl B with the Road Tide and two elephant emojis there. Appreciate uh, Daryl B there. Hammer Studios with that Road Tide and the elephant emoji right there. Appreciate all of you guys getting your thoughts in. Lorenzo Anderson with the Road Tide. Appreciate you, Lorenzo, helping us out there. Road Tide CVC with the Yo, Steven, what it do? Road Tide CVC. I, I, I'm excited right here. 
Happy to be on the show, giving you guys the Bama Nation, the Alabama football coverage. We're getting closer and closer to the A-Day game, which is Saturday, April 13th. Brian Denny, 3 p.m. Central Time. ESPN will have the call for the game. Alabama now officially set up for that first scrimmage of spring ball on tomorrow, that being Thursday. Now, normally... We had the Nick Saban era, which was a great 17-year run there. The first scrimmage was normally on a Saturday, whether it was spring ball, fall camp was on Saturday. Now with Kalen DeBoer, new head coach in here, first spring scrimmage is on a Thursday. So I have to even get myself uh, much more acquainted with that. But Road Tide CVC, we got to talk quarterbacks and wide receivers, absolutely. Got to have that in the conversation and we will have that in the conversation. Let's see. Nicholas Johnson writes in, we need the backdrop back, Steve. And it was a it was a win. Backdrop will be in studio now. So the backdrop will be used uh, for the studio. It is in studio now. I know you guys appreciated that. Y'all got you guys really enjoyed that backdrop. It, it has not gone away. We'll just be in the studio, you know, in the Birmingham area moving forward. So You'll have the backdrop there in studio. We, we will get tons of use out of it. I can guarantee you we will get tons of use out of that backdrop. But we got uh, we got James Crick with with uh, with no in terms of Jalen. Yes, Jalen Hale of a talented wide receiver suffered an injury in practice on yesterday. This came out by several reports, and I got this confirmed from sources on my end close to TDA and the program, it is a knee issue with Jalen Hill. It's, it's a knee, and uh, right now we're hoping that it's not season-ending. Hopefully he will not need to have surgery on it. From my sources, it could be possibly surgery. Hopefully that will not be the case. But here's a young man that, as I mentioned, had a good freshman year, did some, ha- flash some big potential. I got a chance to talk to Kobe Princess yesterday. You know, he said Jalen Hale greatly matured, uh, greatly improved. Uh, a guy that's got sneaky speed, can't get in and out of his breaks, extremely fast. And, and a guy that was in preparation to be a starter at that X position at wide receiver. But right now, dealing with a knee injury, hopefully it will not need surgery. Alabama can get him back there on the field in terms of summer workouts, fall camp, and the upcoming season. But uh, appreciate Dale B. checking us out on the show. He's giving us a road tie. Appreciate you, Dale B. Road tide rise up right in. Stephen, what are you hearing from your sources about spring practice so far? Well, so far, I mean, Jalen Milrose, QB1 is what I'm hearing. Uh, the backup quarterback spot so far, Ty Simpson has a firm grasp on that. But Simpson... Dylan Larnigan, Austin Mack, they're all competing for Austin Mack. This is his first spring practice with the Crimson Tide. So even though he's had a year you know, in the system at Washington understanding this, it's still a difference of learning everything when it comes down to the Alabama football program and the Alabama culture. So Simpson, Larnigan, and Austin Mack all competing for that primary backup spot right now. But Ty Simpson has the lead on it at this point. Jalen Muro profiling QB1. Other things I'm hearing out of about, uh, spring practice right now, if you look at the offensive line uh, from left to right, especially with Caden Proctor coming back, you know a lot of people expect Caden to win that left tackle spot back, which is not going to be given to him. He's got to earn that back. But let's say if he does earn that back, if Caden Proctor does earn that back, the left side of your offensive line from left to right, you will look at Caden Proctor, Tyler Booker, Parker Brasford, well, Parker Brasford slash uh, James Brockemeyer, because those two are competing right now for center, right guard, Jaden Roberts, and right tackle, looking like Miles McVay right now. So that would be your offensive line uh, as it shakes up there. Other things in spring practice, uh, you, you got receivers stepping up there, Kendrick Law, Jeremy Bernard, really playing well. Both guys showing their physicality. Uh, both guys showing the route running prowess. Uh, they can block at the point of attack, which is really good to see there. Defensively, 
Uh, I mean, guys are really stepping up defensively. Uh, first and foremost, Keanu Coat looks like he can be that big time pass rusher for Alabama needs, taking over for Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell off to the NFL. Uh, Red Morgan in the secondary is name to keep your eye on. This kid as a freshman has a chance to flat out possibly start, whether he starts at that Husky position, whether he starts uh, as a safety next to Malachi Moore at that free safety spot. I know Keon Saab is battling for that spot as well. But Red Morgan, the freshman from Central Phoenix City High School here in Alabama, has put on a show all spring long. Him, Zabian Brown, Peyton Woodyard, they put on a show. Jalen Mbakwe's done well. Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. has done well. But three freshmen that have been heard all spring long in practice, Zabian Brown, uh, Red Morgan, uh, Peyton Woodyard. Keep your eyes on all three of those young men. But that's what I've garnered so far here in spring ball. Also with linebacker, Sterling Dixon having a great spring. He's having a good spring. Sterling's having a good spring. Uh, Jeremiah Alexander, the light bulb has finally come on for him. And inside linebacker, he's having a really good spring as well. So inside linebacker room, behind Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell, you've got Sterling Dixon, you've got Jeremiah Alexander, you've got Justin Jefferson, who will kind of be that pass rushing guy on third down when you bring those packages in. And then you got Justin Okunroquo, who continues to grow. He looks good out there as well. But that's just what I'm hearing so far in spring practice. Let's see here. Steve Sheffield writes in, Bama beats North Carolina Road, Todd Road. Big game tonight. For Bama men's basketball in the NCAA tournament, the Sweet 16. Bama taking on top seed at North Carolina. Huge matchup tonight for Nate Oates. And the guys want them to get the job done and move on here to the Elite Eight. Got to shout out Dale B for dropping in that $20 donation. Dale B helping us out on the show. Putting the love in the bucket. Appreciate you, Dale. That $20 donation right there. Jay DeGoat uh, writes in, Steve, what y'all cooking tonight? Well, you know, I had some, we, we got some chicken Alfredo cooking tonight, man. Jay, got some chicken Alfredo cooking tonight. Got some sauteed green beans about to go on here pretty soon and uh, some squash here. That's what we got cooking here. Got some chicken Alfredo, sauteed green beans, a little squash action going. So that's, so we got cooking over here tonight at the Smith uh, Smith House. I appreciate you, Jay, the goat, with that thought right there. We go to Money Printer, never stop. Is Dylan Larnigan looking even better? Dylan Larnigan's in the fire. He's in the fight, man. Competing, looking strong out there, firing the football, tight spiral, putting it where it needs to be at. I'm telling you, Jalen Milrose QB1, that number two spot, Ty Simpson's got it right now, but Dylan Larnigan, Austin Mack, everybody's competing. There's a fire in that room. There's a competitive fire and want to in that room. There's a brotherhood in that room. And it kind of reminds me of, uh, guys, remember 2017, how great that quarterback room was under Saban with Jalen Hurts, Tua Tagovailoa, Vangoa, and Mack Jones? There was a competitive fire in that room. There was an unselfishness, a brotherhood in that room. Uh, everybody wanted to make everybody better. Of course, you wanted to play selfishly as a quarterback, but it was all about making each other better. And that quarterback room, uh, you know, pushed Alabama to a national championship in 2017. Mac Jones became the biggest beneficiary of that room uh, as he was the starter in 2020, taking Alabama to an undefeated college football playoff national championship in the COVID shortened year. I kind of liken this quarterback room to the 2017 version. Got a lot of good guys in that room. A lot of good players in this room. And Nick Sheridan, as the OC and quarterbacks coach, he talks about, I call myself lucky to even be a part of, of coaching these guys. So it's a very, very, very good room. It's a very good room here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Money printer never stops writes in. Will the A-Day tell you a lot about who
who QB two will be? Will the other three quarterbacks be playing for more, will be playing more than Milro in the eight day game? You think, Stephen? Well, eight day will tell some things, Money Printer. It won't tell everything because we all know in the spring uh, the coaching staff is not going to give out everything. They'll give out some small wrinkles here and there, but they're not going to give out every part of the sauce. I think A Day will open our eyes to how good can this offense be a little bit. But I also think that you look at fall camp. I think fall practice will tell the real tape about QB2. Now, if Ty Simpson just goes out there and lights it up and leaves no doubt, then Ty Simpson will be QB2. If one of these other quarterbacks goes out here, whether it's Dylan Lornigan, whether it's Austin Mack, they go out here and light it up and the hype train starts from there, then we could see QB2 from either Austin Mack or Dylan Lornigan. But if it becomes one of those situations where, you know, Jalen Milrow goes out there and plays really well, even the three quarterbacks behind him, they have decent performances, but nobody really truly pulls away as a number two guy. Then you're looking at going into fall camp, you know, wondering, okay, can somebody – make a move here in fall camp. So A-Day will tell us some stuff, Money Printer. It'll tell us some stuff. It won't give us everything, but it'll give us enough to whet our appetite to see, okay, I like what I see here. I like what's going on here. And uh, what could be improved upon moving forward when you discuss summer workouts, fall camp, that type of deal there. Road tide rise up right in. With Juju being in town for the scrimmage, do you think we have a chance to get him? I think he has a chance next season. It, it, with, him, with him being in town, there's, there's a shot there. With him being in town, there's, there's a shot there. It, it's, it's just, you know, how quickly how, how quickly can uh, the coaching staff, Rotat, rise up and press him? You know, once he gets here, how much of a vibe does he get with Kalen DeBoer? How much of a vibe does he get with Coach Shep? How much of a vibe does he get with Coach Sheridan and everybody in this coaching staff? He gets the vibe with everybody in this coaching staff. I think Juju going to want to be a part of this. He gets a he gets a vibe with this coaching staff. He's going to want to be a part of this. I mean, we're, we're, we, we've already seen now with Caden Proctor, you know, at Alabama, leaves to go to Iowa, hears from the guys, hey, you made the wrong decision. Look at what Coach DeBoer got going. Coach Sheridan, look what he got going. Look what uh, Coach Chris Kaplovich has got going. Like, you, you need to bring your behind back here. And uh, Caden Proctor figures out, you know, home is not what it's cracked up to be. Let me go back to where I need to be at. And just the vibe from this coaching staff, here's Caden Proctor coming back in here. So I, I think if, if Juju gets the right feel here, where this coaching staff is concerned, this can be very, very nice here uh, where he is concerned. We got trails for all rights in. Really appreciate you, Stephen, and the whole TDA family. We, we thank you, trails. We thank you. We appreciate you. We do this for the Bama football fan base, for the Bama football family, giving you all of the news, notes, nuggets here on your Alabama football program. Money Printer writes back in, do you think Dylan or Ty might transfer depending on who QB2 is, or do you think all four quarterbacks will be in the fall? That, that's going to be a fun question, man. Who, the, 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 the immediate, it, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I think you're going to lose one quarterback. I don't think you lose two, but I think at the least you lose one. I think if Ty Simpson, I, I think if, if Ty Simpson doesn't go out here and just have a well of an A-Day game, I think you could lose him. I think you can lose him. If Ty doesn't go out here and have just an unbelievable A-Day game, I think you could lose him. Now, I, I think Austin Mack stays regardless. I think Dylan Lornigan sticks around. This was on Ty. If, 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 Ty, if, Ty, if Ty goes out here and goes off, could you lose Dylan? It could happen. But if Ty doesn't go off, I think you lose Ty. So it's this A-Day game is going to be huge, y'all. 
in terms of, in terms of, of the quarterback because one's going to go. I don't think you keep all four. If you keep all four, that is incredible recruiting and strategy by DeBoer and salesmanship by DeBoer. If you keep all four, DeBoer is a master salesman if you keep all four. I just don't see it. I think one of these four go. And it just depends on where you are, where the number three, who 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 falls as the number two guy? Who falls as the immediate backup? And whoever falls behind the immediate backup, one of those two is going to have a decision to make. But this spring is going to be uh, it's, it's going to be crazy. But you guys continue to get your thoughts in here on the show. We appreciate all of you guys. We actually get into the first topic of conversation on the show, and that is, like I mentioned, the backup quarterback position for Alabama getting interesting here in spring ball. I mean, Jalen Milrow is doing what he needs to do to remain as QB one. He he's he's had a phenomenal spring. I mean, I, I've heard from so many people he has done nothing to regress. He has done nothing to take a back seat. He has done nothing to cause worry, to cause fear, to cause any type of concern. He's made the improvements. He's made the progressions. He's made the growth. It continues to make the growth. So right now, as it stands today, on this evening, on a Wednesday in March, late March, Jalen Muro's QB1. Now behind him, you have Ty Simpson, a redshirt sophomore. You've got Dylan Larnigan, a redshirt freshman. You've got a freshman and Austin Mack transfer from Washington. This is the battle right here because all three are immensely talented. All three are gifted. All three can spin the football. All three have marquee potential. This is a great room of quarterbacks under Nick Sheridan. Now for Ty Simpson, he's known more as a pure passer. He's got crazy legs, athleticism. We saw that at times last year, but we know him as a pure passer. Former five-star from Westview High School in Martin, Tennessee. Ty Simpson came in the game against South Florida last year where when Tyler Buckner was stinking up the joint. You know, Ty Simpson comes in, leads you to 17 unanswered points, two big touchdown drives to help you win. 17 to 3. Simpson D at that. You have Dylan Larnigan, who's a former four star in the 2023 class from uh, Brookwood High School in Georgia, powerhouse program. Used to be a, was a baseball player as well, former pitcher, a guy that can process information very well. You go back to last spring, so many people felt like he was the best quarterback on the roster. You go back to last spring, Larnigan had the best A-day performance. For some people, it was he would have been the guy, he would have been the starter had he been of a higher classification, right? And then you got Austin Mack coming in as a transfer. Physically, at 6'6", 226, he may need a little bit extra muscle, a little bit extra weight, but the height's there. <laughs> I mean, the height's there. The potential's there. The big-time ability to become a star and Alabama is there. So those three quarterbacks are all battling here behind Milrow. But according to sources, close people I trust, got this vetted that I've spoken with, they have told me uh, Ty Simpson has the hold on this spot right now. Back up, probably number two guy. Ty Simpson has the hold on the spot. Ty Simpson's looking good out there. He has the hold here on the spot, as he should be, as he should have the hold on the right. This is his third year in the program. You know, his father's a coach, Jason Simpson. You know, Ty should have a firm grip here on this on this primary number two job, primary number two spot. This first scrimmage on Thursday tomorrow should tell us a lot, too. You cut the lights on, action flying around the stadium. The coaches take a step back. They let the players play fast, play physical, play with confidence, play with flair. You know, who can execute the assignment? So this first scrimmage should tell us a lot here about who can really put Alabama behind Milrow in terms of quarterback in the best spot here to win games. But right now, in terms of the backup quarterback room, 
Coach Sheridan mentioned on yesterday, the offense has made strides at quarterback. Uh, they took big steps forward on yesterday. There's still a, a, a work in progress, breaking in a new scheme, a new system. But he likes this room. He loves this room. He likes where everybody's at right that now, though there's, there's still work to do. There is still work to do. So as of right now, looks like Jalen Milrow is holding that torch there at QB1. Ty Simpson, Dylan Lornigan, Austin Mack competing there for the number two backup spot with Ty Simpson holding serve at this point right now in spring practice. We're going to go to a quick first break here, folks, in the show. Don't touch that dial. When we get back, we jump into your comment section. We grab your thoughts here on the show. But right now, let's go to a quick word from our partners, Alumni Hall, Midtown Village in Tuscaloosa. You guys check them out. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. This, oh, man. Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that bam without this shirt right here, fresh polo. You gotta also rock the all paint like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts, shoes, sweatshirts, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. You know what time on this baby, Alumni Hall. Check out our partners right there at Midtown Village, Tuscaloosa. Got the keychains for you, the hats, the gear, all things uh, all things supporting your Alabama Crimson Tide. Check out our partners right there for uh, TDA, Alumni Hall right there. But we go to the chat line here to get your comments, to get your thoughts here on this show. Road Tide rise up, right? And Steven, do you think we can pick up some key pieces when the portal opens up? If so, if so, what positions do you see them targeting? Well, when the portal opens up, I could see, depending on how the offensive line looks this spring, I could see maybe an offensive lineman, maybe. In the portal, maybe. Maybe an offensive lineman, maybe a, uh, maybe a tight end, maybe. Maybe, maybe an offensive lineman, maybe a tight end, uh, you know, maybe a uh, – you don't need another wide receiver, of course. You don't need another wide receiver. So maybe an offensive lineman, maybe a tight end, uh, maybe a linebacker, defensive lineman, linebacker, linebacker. Yeah, so li li linebacker, tight end, offensive lineman, possibly. Yeah, those are my three. Linebacker, tight end, offensive lineman. Don't see receiver. Don't see defensive back. You know, so 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 th th those would be my three: offensive line, tight end, uh, linebacker. There, absolutely, y'all get those keychains, man. Got to get those keychains. So it's University of Alabama keychains. Got to get that right there. Alumni Hall. Get yourself stocked up here for the A Day game. It's going to be great here Saturday, April thirteenth, three p.m. Central Time from Bryant Denny. Here in Tuscaloosa, ESPN will have the call. The commentary team of Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Molly McGrath will be on hand here for that matchup. But continue, guys, to get your thoughts here into the show, your comments. Appreciate all of that here on the show. But we're going to drop into now topic number two of the conversation. This was a tough one because, uh, uh, I mean – we did have a visitor on campus on last weekend. We did have a visitor on campus Saturday of last weekend. Scott Cochran was on campus, people. He was here. I saw him driving away from the campus in his van. He was here to, I think his son had a visit to the University of Alabama. So Scott Cochran, former strength coach, was on campus. 
And then just a few days after seeing that, Bama suffers an injury in spring practice. Now, does this injury have anything to do with Scott Cochran being on campus? I'm not going to say that. I am not one for conspiracy theories. I will not bring myself even to that point. But Bama has an injury in spring practice, and it's at a position that we were all just so excited about, and especially with this young man because of what he was able to provide as a freshman. Jalen Hale got hurt in practice yesterday. God, dog. Got hurt. Leg injury, specifically a knee. Uh, there are reports about an ambulance being involved. And, uh, I mean, so uh, Jalen Hale, former four-star from Longview High School in Texas at 6'1", 189 pounds. Uh, Jalen Hale came in the 2023 class. Here's a guy that um, – uh, a three-sport athlete in high school, played football, played basketball, ran track and field. Uh, a guy that really did some nice things a season ago, had five catches for 168 yards and a touchdown, grabbed a 33-yard pass from Jalen Milrow for a touchdown against Ole Miss at Bryant-Denny. And just uh, the players around him and the coaching staff was really having their eyes on him uh, being in that rotation, being in that competition for the starting spot there at that X position at wide receiver, that X position at the top of the formation. So a lot of people had Jalen Hale sort of pegged for that spot. And uh, once again, go back to a conversation I had yesterday with Kobe Prentice. He talked about Jalen Hale's sneaky speed, deceptive speed, can get in and out of his breaks, drops his weight well, a guy that has matured in the offense, Prepared to have a bigger role on the team. Kobe Prentice said Jalen Hale prepared to have a bigger role on the team. And now we got an injury to him. Now, of course, what I was told, it was pretty rough. Uh, could possibly be severe. My hope is that it's not as bad as what's being laid on. My hope and prayer is that it, it will not require surgery though if it does uh, that has to be done but my main thing is uh, will Alabama have him to start fall camp that's the main thing I mean I understand not having him in spring practice sucks but look spring ball is spring ball is the formality right spring ball is the formality a day you know fall camps where it matters right fall camp is where it matters so hopefully Bamination, we will be able to see Jalen Hale, talented young man, bounce back, make a full recovery to get out there on the field for fall camp because you, you kind of need him. Yes, Alabama has depth at wide receiver. Don't get me wrong. You got Kobe Prentice. You got Kendrick Law. You got Emmanuel Henderson, a whom Jamarcus Shepard was really high on yesterday. Got a chance to talk to Coach Shep. He said, E-Man can run. Dude can run. Dude can fly. Dude understands what we're asking of him. He knows why we're doing this thing, these things offensively. He can drop his weight, get in and out of burst and cuts and, and routes. And uh, Coach Shep, very impressed with E-Man right now. So uh, you have Kobe Prentice. You have Kendrick Law. You have Henderson. You do have Jaron Hamilton. You do have Cole Adams. Uh, I mean, you, you you do have some guys. You, you, you do have Re you do have Caleb Odom now as a wide receiver. You got Rico Scott. You've got um, you've got uh, the kid that came out of Tennessee. You, you, got, you got Bubba Hampton. That's another kid. You got Bubba Hampton out of Texas, and uh, Kobe Prentice mentioned that guy's a route runner. He's going to be good. You got Bobby Hampton, you got Amari Jefferson, that's the kid. You got Amari Jefferson. And then, of course, you got Ryan Williams, the electric five-star. He'll be coming in, he'll come in, in the summer. So you got some depth there at wide receiver. It's just, you know, Jalen Hale garnered some experience last year. And you can't put a price on that. So hopefully uh, it's not something that will require surgery. But it is news here as Jalen Hale did suffer a leg injury, knee injury yesterday in practice. So 
With this being said, Abomination, with this being said, who do you look forward to seeing step up in Hale's absence? He's out for the rest of spring, you got to figure. Not going to play in the A-Day game. Who Get your thoughts in the chat line. Who do you want to see at wide receiver step up in the absence of one Jalen Hale? So we're going to get those thoughts. We're going to get those conversations uh, in the chat line. Let's grab a few of those before we go to, to the next group, next break. If you got anything here, if you got anything here, let's see here. Road Tide rise up says Cochran can't catch a break. <laughs> He's got that thought right there. Uh, he also writes in God speed to Hale. God speed to Jalen Hale. He's able to get back here. Uh, get back here. Uh, smooth recovery. He writes in here. Stephen, are you hearing any news on Keeley and Yancey Pierre? Keon Keeley, the coaching staff's high on him. They want him to play in that bandit role as a defensive lineman. They want Keon Keeley, Kane Womack. They want Keeley to play in that bandit role. Freddie Roach wants to turn Keeley loose, get after the quarterback. He wants to turn Keeley loose. Keeley has gotten a lot of marquee coaching from Freddie Roach and Jamie Mosley, an all-field analyst that works with the defensive lineman, a former Alabama linebacker himself. But Keeley's gotten a lot of private coaching, a lot of one-on-one coaching from Freddie Roach and Jamie Mosley. So a lot is expected from Keon Keeley. Yancey Pierre, Christian Robinson, the outside linebackers coach, really likes Pierre. Really likes Pierre. And, and, and he's going to be somebody that's going to be in that rotation to come out for the quarterback. I, I, was, hearing, I, was, I was even hearing news here, and uh, I'm definitely going to fact check this, but I was getting some information that Bama could possibly have a package where Pierre stands up on the line of scrimmage where everybody else has a hand in the dirt, Pierre stands up like in the middle and comes after the quarterback on a blitz or something, on a blitz. Like, I don't know how true that is, but if there's a package for Yancey Pierre and he's standing up in the middle and he's coming on a blitz, watch the quarterback. <laughs> Watch your quarterback out there because uh, this is Courtney Upshaw's first cousin. But that joker is mean and he mean business. So Coach Robinson likes Pierre. Keon Keeley's getting a lot of that personal one-on-one hand coaching there on the defensive line. So uh, a lot of a lot of fun stuff to watch right now. Cannot wait to this to the scrimmage on tomorrow. Cannot wait to this A-Day game to get a lot of that so gonna, gonna, gonna be awesome here to, 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 to look at this uh to see this but appreciate road tide and and, and rise up there for those thoughts uh also folks this evening be sure to check out you know alabama men's basketball this evening taking on north carolina in the sweet 16 of the ncaa tournament trying to move on to the elite eight and continue to dance on you know, in this tournament, Alabama, University of Alabama, that being the lone team from the state remaining in the NCAA tournament of March Madness. But we're going to go to another quick break here, folks. I'm going to touch that down. When we get back, we return to the conversations here in the chat line. We get your thoughts. We get your conversations. Get in the chat line now. Get your thoughts in the chat line. Appreciate every last one of you guys. Also, get your questions, get your thoughts about who do you see stepping up in spring practice with Jalen Hale out. Who at wide receiver do you see step up in spring ball with Hale out as of right now? We'll be right back on the other side of this. We get another word here from our great spot, from our great partners that are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. This, oh, man. Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that band without this shirt right here. Fresh polo. You gotta also rock the all paint. Like Kanye West right there. DJ's gotta get you some kicks. 
keep change. University of Alabama, keep change. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts, shoes, sweatshirts, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. That's right, people. That's right. Get the gear. Get the gear from the keychains on down right there at Alumni Hall, Midtown Village in Tuscaloosa. Our partners with Tushin, Alabama Magazine. Appreciate Alumni Hall for all that they do for us here at TDA and also for all that they do in terms of the University of Alabama football program. Now, we get back into the comment section to get your thoughts here on the show. The question was, with Jalen Hale out, Jalen Hale, knee injury, leg injury in practice, who steps up at wide receiver in his place? Who takes over for right now at wide receiver in his place here? So we got Ro Todd rise up, right, saying, I would love to see Prentice, Law, and Henderson step up this season. I love all three of those guys, Ro Todd rise up. I think Prentice is an elite route runner. He's big on the routes. Kendrick Law can do the, can do some of everything. Can run routes, can catch the football, can run the football as a running back, can go in motion, can probably do some things on special teams if the coaching staff lets him do that. Uh, can block. Kendrick Law can do a little bit of everything. If an Emmanuel Henderson, I go back to Coach Shep, high on E-man. He's grown a lot. He's matured a lot. He can run. He can fly. He can catch, he can make plays, and people forget, you know, E-Man was one of the top in-state and national prospects in the 2022 uh, recruiting cycle from Geneva County High School in Alabama. And uh, here's a dude that was just a rock star in high school. And the only reason why he had to move to wide receiver from running back was the other player Alabama signed in its 2022 class, that being Jam Miller, the four-star from Tyler Legacy High School in Tyler, Texas, Miller had more weight on him than uh, Henderson. That's the only reason. Miller had more of a running back's body than Henderson did. So that's the only reason why E-Man got moved to, to wide receiver, because Jam came in with a bit more weight on him. Jam came in with more of a running back's body than Emmanuel Henderson. But E-Man can ball. I mean, the man can, he can play. So it, it's going to be fun to watch him uh, in spring practice. It's going to be fun to watch him when it gets down to the A-Day game because of uh, the style that, that, that E-Man brings to the table. But appreciate you guys getting all of your thoughts, all of your questions in here. Aaron McGuire with that row tied row of the road top and rise up here on the show. But we right now get into our final topic of conversation this evening. And hold on. We got road top, no rise up, rise back in. Any news on England and Formby? Wilkin Formby is battling Miles McVeigh for that right tackle position. So Formby and McVeigh are battling for right tackle. Aileen, he's still running with the second team at guard. Uh, he's still running with he's still running with the second team. Uh, I think at right guard, he's still running with the second team. So he's behind. I want to say he's behind Big Jaden Roberts. Olas Aileen is right behind Big Jaden Roberts. So if Roberts had to take a breather, Aileen would come in there. I think, I think Aileen is behind Roberts, and I think Rock Montgomery is behind uh, Tyler Booker, although Rock Montgomery could also play some center as well if he wanted to. But Formby and Miles McVay, they're battling it out at right tackle. A. Lanina running second team where the offensive guards are concerned. He's right behind big Jaden Roberts. So there's the update there when you look at Formby and A. Lanina. And A. Lanina, 
from Finland. I go back to last spring. This dude was just throwing people everywhere in the A-Day game. I mean, A-Day game, Olaf was physical last spring. I mean, Olaf was straight physical last A-Day. Was picking people up and throwing them down like rag dolls. So I, I think he's made growth under Coach Cap. And it's just going to be fun to see how, how this offensive line shapes, you know, all the way out. Right now, if I had to put my finger on it, uh, the first team group would look like from left to right. Proctor, should he really win the job outright? Uh, and him, him, him coming back, Proctor, Booker, Browspert slash Brockemeyer, whoever wins that center job, that was going to be straight. Uh, Jaden Roberts at right guard and at right tackle, Miles, Mc, uh, Miles McVay slash uh, Wilkin Formby. Right now, slight edge there to Miles McVay. I think he's just a bit more nastier than Formby is in terms of that offensive line. Uh, position at right tackle. But we now get into, folks, final topic of conversation here on the show. And it goes to you got two freshmen, two freshmen on offense that U.S. Bama Nation, boy, I keep your eyes on these two. You got two freshmen on offense that are making plays, and uh, one of them should see a lot of playing time. The other one, should he continue to grow, could surprise some people. So, Caleb Odom is going to see a lot of playing time. He's going to see playing time. Five-star, Carrollton High School in Georgia. I mean, 6'5". This guy has got the physicality. He's got the toughness. He's absorbing everything. We're now hearing in practice he runs smooth routes. For a big guy, he makes getting open seem easy, uh, can catch the football super clean. Uh, Caleb Odom, the high school he came from uh, prepared him for this, right? The high school he came from prepared him for this. Kendrick Law said, opening week of practice, Caleb Odom, he's a wide receiver. He is not a tight end. And ever since Kendrick Law said that, Caleb Odom is playing like a wide receiver. He's not playing like a tight. He's playing like a wide receiver out there, and to have that type of physical, big body on the and Bama and I mentioned Bama needs that. We, we Bama needs to get back to that. The last physical big body receiver for Alabama that panned out was Julio Jones. That was, that was the last one. We thought Duran Carter would do something. Yeah. We thought Raheem Falcons would do something. Yeah. We thought um. You know, Derek Keefe would do something. Injuries took it away. We thought Cam Sims would do something. Injuries took it away. We thought a Jai Hawk, eh. Like, it's time for a physical big body receiver to pan out for Alabama. And why not King of Odom? Why not? It's time for it to pan out. And, and, and why not time for it to be King of Odom to make sure it pans out? So, I think he's one for people to for, pe for people to look at to take seriously here, especially when you talk about the upcoming spring game. And then number two, Bubba Hampton, Aaron Bubba Hampton. This dude, four, four star from Texas, Bama flipped him late in the 2024 cycle. Bama flipped him late. Steve Sarkeesian thought he had Bubba. Hampton flips to Bama, and when you watch his tape, ooh. This dude can play receiver or defensive back, but right now he's a receiver. Hands, toughness, routes, playmaking ability. Kobe Prentice, he's going. Hey, Bubba's going to be real good. Bubba's going to be real good. Now, because he enrolled early for spring ball, you know Bubba's got you know a leg on some guys. There's a lot of depth in that wide receiver room. I, for starters, I, I would like to see somebody like Bubba Hampton on kickoff return. For real. I, I would like to see Bubba on kickoff return. Kickoff return, punt return. Like That's a position where you take a freshman that hasn't quite made a name for himself and you put him out there on special teams and you say, son, go out there and ball out. You earn a spot offensively or defensively 
by what you do on special teams. I would like to see Bubba Hampton and that kickoff return, punt return like roll. What does he do there? Because if he goes out there and shines, whew, it's about fun. Uh, fun is about to be. Uh, it's about to be. Uh, it's about to ensue. Fun, but Hampton and Caleb Odom are the two guys freshmen. But I would look at that need to be taken seriously offensively, offensively because of the skill set, to how both have looked so far in spring ball, and just how the coaches. And the players have been talking about both of them uh, kind of at will, at nauseam there. Absolutely. Roll tight, rise up, right in. Let's play the best players. Regardless if they're a freshman or upperclassman, the best player deserves to play. Right on. The best player, regardless of classification, deserves to play and needs to be out there. So, Coach DeBoer, his staff, got to have the right guys or the right players here on the field uh absolutely let's see here uh todd says late yet again lol well todd i mean we, we, we're here we're here uh we got here uh roughly an hour ago but uh you, you're in here todd that's the point you're in here you're in here todd and that's the main thing you're in here whether you're late whether you're early whether you're on time todd you are here my man it's like my aunt used to say you know, I may get to church late, but as long as I get there to hear the preacher say, amen, I got something. <laughs> that, that's what my aunt used to say. As long as I get here, as long as I get here to hit the, hear the preacher say, amen. And so Ty says, Stephen is not at the club this week. No, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, Ty. Not there, Ty. But Friday, Friday, stay tuned Friday. Friday, I may be back. So uh, stay tuned to that for Friday. We're going to save that for Friday. Friday, I, I I might be back at that old club 112. So we, 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 we will save that for Friday. So absolutely, absolutely. But uh, appreciate all of you guys, the Bama fans, for checking us out today. Um, for getting all the news, notes, information here on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. As always, you can uh, get all the information by downloading or accessing the Touchdown Alabama magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store. If you got the Android phone for your audio needs, you know what it is. You check us out, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. We got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees fit. I look to be back in studio Friday. We'll be back in studio Friday, continuing the conversation that is Thai football on in my own words. Also, Friday, you gotta also check out, folks. You also, you also, you also check out. Uh, we're getting this uh, geared up. We're getting this geared up. So the new podcast I'm doing uh, the way it is. Once a show, we're bringing it back now. Podcast the way it is is me giving my. Uh, you're getting nothing. You get something you've never seen before from me transparent in-depth stories on my journey of covering Alabama football, being with Touchdown Alabama, the highs and lows, the ups, the downs, the marquee moments in the in the life of me covering your Crimson Tide, the way it is podcast. You are going to be getting this. So be sure to tune in uh, for that for you to get never before told stories by yours truly. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. So you definitely want to subscribe to Touchdown Alabama Magazine, touchdownalabama.com right there to get those stories. You also want to go to TDA Plus to get that as well. Did I hear anything on – did I hear anything on Jalen Hale? Uh, Jalen Hale, leg injury, knee injury to be, to be specific um, uh, right now. Don't try to see. Hopefully, it's not season ending. Uh, I know some have said that's kind of severe. I will continue to look into that, but hopefully, nothing. nothing hopefully, nothing season ending. Hopefully, it will not uh, require surgery, but it could possibly. But right now, we know out for the rest of spring practice. Jalen Hale, more than likely at this point now, not playing the A day game. But like I said, hopefully, 
this will not this is not anything season ending. I will continue to uh, get information on Jalen Hale and provide that to you guys as I get that information. But I want to appreciate all of you guys for all of the you all the questions in the chat line, all of the thoughts, all the conversation, all of the love. Appreciate every last one of you for making this your show. Your spot for talk all things nonstop Crimson Tide football. Once again, scrimmage, first scrimmage of spring practice is set up here for tomorrow. Uh, that being Thursday, I try to get you as much information as I can here from the first scrimmage here of spring ball. So we'll get you that as well. But as always, Batman Nation, uh, as always, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate Value those husbands, children, continue doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing there to not be bored. You get yourself those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks, good night. Tuscaloosa, I will see you guys Friday. Enjoy Bama versus North Carolina in the NCAA tournament, the Sweet 16. Hopefully, Coach Oates. And the guys can pull this out, take this home, and keep on dancing until the uh, into, into the Elite Eight. But see you on Friday, Tuscaloosa. Been listening. Damn my own words. <laughs>